again and welcome to Foreplay Radio Sex Therapy. I'm your host, certified sex therapist Lori Watson, author of Wanting Sex Again and blogger at Psychology Today and WebMD. And I have with me Dr. Adam Matthews, my co-host, who's a couples therapist, psychotherapist, and president of NCAMFT. Foreplay is dedicated to helping couples keep it hot. Each episode, we cover an aspect of sex that impacts your sex life and something that you can relate to. So if you find our discussions helpful, please give us a review on iTunes or Stitcher. We would love it if you would tell a friend about us. You can find us also on the web at foreplayrst.com. And if you have a comment or a topic that you'd like us to talk about, we'd love to hear from you. Please send them to us at info at foreplayrst.com. Thanks for listening. Now on to today's topic. So today, Adam, we're going to talk about sexual bids and what we do with those. That sounds like such a weird thing, Lori. Sexual what's, bids. What's a sexual bid? I know what a bid in poker is. Uh huh. I don't. I mean, and I okay, think so I know. And I know what a sexual bid. But I'm wondering what or a bid is. But what in a relationships? But I'm guessing most people out there would have no idea what they're talking about right. or it's even kinda, that it's kind of lingo. Yeah, or even that they're doing it. But this happens all the time in relationship, right? Yes. Like we're making bids back and forth right. all the time. So a bid is basically a bid for attention. It's like I'm trying to get your attention. And this is based on Gottman research, John Gottman. He's America's love expert. That's what I is keep that, like, I yeah. keep reading that all Go the time. John. He, he's the <laughs> he's America's love expert. <laughs> That's great. Okay, what do we get to be? Um, America's sex expert. I hope sex so. experts, yeah. right? <laughs> 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 right. Uh, that's that's what they'll call us, Laurie. Yeah. That's what they'll call us. Yeah. Actually, I'm doing a blog for John Gottman soon on sex, on awesome. this very topic, on sexual very bids. Very good. So if a bid is basically some sort of bid for attention, what does that look like in relationship? It would be any time that there is a something that's offered up, um, mm-hmm. a an initiation for sex, right? But it's not even always directly for sex, right? I mean, it is... At times, it is um, a bid for affection. Mm-hmm. Um, would be would fa- probably fall under the broad category of a bid for sex, um, foreplay, kissing, you know, all that. hey, hey, honey, you still awake? Yeah, like <laughs> all, all of those are <laughs> still. in your sleep. <laughs> that, that's right. You up? <laughs> yeah. Like those are those are you alive? You breathing? <laughs> I mean, those are okay. Yeah, those are okay, bids, let, right? let's let's go back. I mean, okay. to me. A, a bid is a request for some form of attention. So, like, if you're sitting at the table and you're both there in the morning and your wife says to you, hey, honey, uh, look at the the cardinal out the window. A, responding to the bid is you look up from the computer or from the paper and you look at the cardinal and you're like, oh, yeah, it's beautiful. You know, it's a male cardinal. I wonder where the female is. They usually are in pairs. Mm-hmm. It's some response to that request for attention. And you were saying earlier that sometimes men are not aware of that from women. What, what do you mean by that? Well, I think they're not often aware of the subtext of what is happening. Okay. Right. Like, I mean, we talk, I think men talk about all the time that what women are saying is not really what they're saying. And it's okay. confusing. Okay. Right? It's confusing us. So when she says, hey, look at that cardinal, mm-hmm. she's saying, hey, come enjoy this moment with me. Yeah. Right? Come be or, with me. Be present with me. Yeah. Or if, or if she comes down and says hey, how do I look? She's really saying something like, do you still find me attractive? Right, exactly. You know, uh, some, exactly. Something like that, that. And if that, she says, I saw my sister today, she's saying, could you talk with me a little bit? Yeah. Right? right. It's a bid for attention, but oftentimes obliquely for maybe what she wants. And, yeah. and men as well. I think maybe you're saying men are more direct. I think men are more direct with sexual bids because yes. that's, that's for most men that's the primary way that they uh-huh. and that's their forte. Yeah, but men are but when it comes to emotional bids, like men are dense. I mean, we are we are dense dense creatures, and so when when <laughs> when she come <laughs> when our wives come down down the stairs, I mean, for the most part, I mean, some of us are more attuned than others, but for the most but part, if she, your wife says, "Does this dress make me look fat?" You know the answer, right? We know the answer <laughs> that there, but there is really there is no room good for one. honesty. There's no room for honesty in that one. <laughs> but if but if she comes down and in the in the same dress that we've seen her in a hundred times, and she says, "Do I look good?" or "How do I look?" Uh-huh. If she says, "How do I look?" and we don't look up from whatever we're doing and said, "You look great," right? We're right. missing what she's really trying what she's right. really trying to say there because in our minds in most men's minds we have 
already said that. We've already said it once. Why do we have to keep saying it again? Uh-huh. Uh, things like uh-huh. that that go on and but it, on. But it's a request for interaction. Yeah, that's right. It's a request for a bid is a request for interaction, whether it's, you know, an emotional interaction or we're going to talk today about a sexual bid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and that's and that's it gets um gets confusing, I think. I think it's it it's hard when you're not aware of them or you're not watching for them. You miss them. Mm-hmm. I think both men and women miss them all the time. Um, yeah. And they start to get and bids start to get ignored. Right. Which right. is much more damaging than even rejecting the bid. Yeah. For attention. For the most part. Yeah. My best girlfriend in L.A., who's single, by the way, who's beautiful, and i got to set her up. Somehow we got to use foreplay to set her up set, We're going to start running a dating service. <laughs> that's All right. right. <laughs> this is not therapy, so that's uh, totally allowed. That's right. No, no. Anyway, she is, you know, she is impatient with me. If she texts mm-hmm. me in the morning and I don't text back, she's like, you know, in a couple of hours, she's like, hello? But honestly, mm-hmm. I don't carry my phone when I'm at work. I... You know, I'm with patients all day long. Yeah. I, I rarely have a, a second to look at my text, mm. you know. But, I mean, she's basically saying, did you get it? Yeah. You know, hello, Do you still, anybody home? Do you still Are recognize still my that, best friend? That's right, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, mm-hmm. and couples do that all the time. They're check. It's almost like, doesn't it feel like a check-in to just check in on the relationship to say, are we still in sync? Do we still get each other? Yes. Are we still paying attention to what is to what is happening. But it, uh, it's on a micro level. Hmm. And this is what I think is difficult to understand is bids are micro levels of interactions. Yeah. So so if we stop tuning in, if we get preoccupied by our life, we, we don't pay attention to hmm. what our partner is doing or saying. My, my husband accuses me of this occasionally, right? Yeah. He's like, Lori, Sometimes you start a sentence and you may not realize it, but you stop talking mid sentence. <laughs> my wife, you know? Lori, my wife says the exact same thing about me. <laughs> I don't know what that says. Uh, yeah, she but says it's a level thing. of preoccupation. You know, I, I've had the conversation in my head and I'm going forward yeah. and, and I'm too preoccupied sometimes, yeah. right? And so I miss not only communicating well, but I miss what is going on around me. Yeah. And I think. I mean, that just happens over life. Like, it just builds up over time, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it just always, things just get in the way that take up our mind and turn us away from our partner, mm-hmm. right? And I think that's one of the key things that Dr. Gottman talks about is that it's about turning toward each other rather than turning away toward each other. Yes. And all of those things that you're talking about pull us away from our partners and pull us in, and take our attention so mm-hmm. that we then miss those bids that yeah. they're making for our attention and affection. I mean, as you say that, I think the number one attention grabber these days is our phone. Yeah. Right? It holds our work email. It holds Facebook. It holds texts. And the way it bids us mm. is with all these noises, these whistles and sounds. I mm-hmm. mean, many people are more tuned in to the bid that their phone makes than they are the bid that their partner makes uh, for interaction. Yeah, right? I mean, you or yeah, I mean, you're, if you sit in any coffee shop in America and you hear the same ringtone, everybody looks up, right? <laughs> Everyone looks up, yeah. you know, but if your partner is standing across the way trying to get your attention, how often are you going to look up? Exactly. Um, and so, I mean, th- there's all the typical stuff too that gets in our way that just is just life stuff, kids, buying houses, having to repair your, those houses, right. the jobs, friendships our, even. our own thoughts yeah, our anxiety our thought, yeah. right our anxiety about the future i mean we're not even there and we're living in some place of worry and frustration that hasn't even happened i mean that's a great preoccupier mm. i've been talking to clients a lot lately about the importance of being present I mean, i think that's what that's what when you're present you are able to catch those bids a lot right because they're you're not that you're not either preoccupied with the past or freaked out about the future you're able to be right in front of the person that you're with and catch what they're doing for doing with you and you know i think that that is what is so exciting about falling in love Mm -hmm. i mean i don't know if you remember but to me time really stood still there was nothing else that was important Mm. i mean i literally hung on every word that he said and i was so in the moment i mean nothing called to me yeah no 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 other Anything was that important as being there, listening to him. I mean, I was just exhilarated yeah. in every moment. Yeah. And that's the, the essence, right, of being very present to yeah. your loved one. Yeah, we were at the college where my wife and I met. There were all of these beautiful white swings everywhere, outdoor uh-huh. swings. 
And I remember just we would sitting there. I mean, you could see couples all over the place. That's what you didn't sit in a swing unless you were coupled up. Ah, and you just and we would just romantic. sit there. Oh, well, yeah. And just sit there for hours. Right. Talking. Yeah. And I can't remember the last time that that, you know, that that w- amount of time that we had that amount of time to just be able to sit there for hours, yeah. hours and hours. And so it becomes it becomes much harder to grasp and to hold on to. Right. Um, and be that kind of present with that amount of time. So it's really important, I think, to set time aside mm. to be present to each other. You know, 20 minutes a day even yeah. where all you're doing is looking at each other and talking. No televisions, no phones, no nothing. But I also think that while Gottman really talks about how important it is to pick up on these emotional bids, I think that there is the importance of sexual bids. Mm. And many times I think that a sexual bid might be something that is, you know, from you know, a sexual bid might be an actual seduction. Mm. It might be a lifted eyebrows. It might just be a compliment or it might be some subtle question. Mm. And what I see so much of and we're going to talk about after the break is many times the sexual bid is overtly turned away yeah. or it's ignored because the person has a different libido or they are tired of that, or there's the conflict that's already ensued. So we want to talk about what sexual bids are and how to give them better and how to receive them and and how to turn toward them instead of turning away. So let's do that after the break, right? After the break, you're listening to 4Play Radio Sex Therapy with sex therapist Lori Watson and Dr. Adam Matthews, our couples therapist. We'll be right back. Wanting Sex Again, How to Rediscover Desire and Heal a Sexless Marriage by Certified Sex Therapist Lori Watson. Each chapter is designed to fix one of the problems that cause low libido from early marriage through the childbearing years, even all the way through menopause. I've also had men read it and tell me that for them it was the most hopeful thing they read about resolving sexual problems. Look for Wanting Sex Again on Amazon.com. You can also talk to Lori Watson for therapy in person or via Skype. I offer couples counseling and sex therapy and I think about both aspects of the relationship, emotional intimacy and sexual technique and that combination together helps marriages be happy weekend couples intensives are also offered improve your sex and improve your relationship with awakening center for couples and intimacy find out more at awakenloveandsex.com awaken what's possible it is one of my great joys in life to be able to really help individuals and couples find strength in their relationships and really find hope again. Licensed marriage and family therapist, Dr. Adam Matthews from Matthews Counseling. I work with a wide variety of issues, including depression and anxiety, marital issues, issues with adolescence. I believe that therapy should be designed around you, that it should be personalized to who you are and to your unique situation. Therapy is available in office, online, and by phone. I want therapy to be comfortable for everyone. At our office, you'll find that we sit around a fireplace in deep, comfortable chairs, look at the problem differently, and offer practical solutions for you to take home and utilize outside of the therapy room. Schedule today and rediscover hope. You can find me on the web at matthewscounseling.net. Matthews with one T. You can contact us through email or phone and find a lot of resources on our website, matthewscounseling.net. We're back with Foreplay Radio Sex Therapy, and today we're talking about sexual bids. Yeah, we talked about emotional bids earlier, but we really want to focus on now on what are the sexual bids that happen in a relationship, right? And how? what are some of the ones you've heard from couples about that the types of bids that they make sexually with each other? Well, right? well the one I hear about all the time and I get complaints about is the man who comes up behind his wife who's cooking at the stove, and he cups her breasts and kind of bumps her, and you know I call it the cup and bu- the cup and bump. The cup and bump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, and oftentimes she like swats him away. Yeah. It's a sexual bit. It's a very sexual bit, it's, right? It's there's nothing covert or no. <laughs> or subtle about it's that at all. Direct <laughs> it's very direct and very direct. very sexual. Yeah, and and some women, of course, love it. I yeah. mean, they they respond to that kind of sexuality. 
But some women, maybe because it's coming at the wrong time, they've got to feed the kids yeah. or they're making dinner and they're tired from their long day. You know, they're not in a frame of mind. And so what mm-hmm. do they say? They say, you know, stop, right? Yeah. Go away. That's a rejection That's of a, a rejection sexual of bid. Them. Yeah. I've had couples talk about just making the eye contact that they make too. Like one, I had one woman talk about that she wanted her husband to recognize because he kept failing to recognize the look that she was giving him. She mm-hmm. had his particular, she, I guess her this sexy, sexy look. look. Yeah, she had it and apparently he wasn't getting it. So she would be staring at him across the dinner table, like giving him the look and he we just failed. He yeah, failed he to failed notice miserably. it. And so he, he, rather than rejecting it, he just completely missed it and completely ignored it. Yeah, so she actually was initiating, she thought, and he, mm. he wasn't picking up on it, and she had yeah. no idea why, felt rejected. Yeah. Yeah, I think in general, and this is stereotypical, but in general, women tend to make lesser, sort of less obvious sexual bids, mm. even if they're interested. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, both rejecting and ignoring are damaging, right? Sure. Because it makes, it, it makes us feel less safe to make, make it again, yeah. to make another sexual bid. And it, Gottman says that actually ignoring is worse than rejection. Right. I, I mean, it's sort of like no attention is worse than bad attention. Right. Because if you, if you reject the bid, you can negotiate that later. And, you can and talk it's an, about it. It's an interaction. It yeah. may not be the interaction you want, but it's an interaction. Yeah, but the, the wife on the receiving end of a cup and bump can say, Hey, maybe don't do that next time. Yeah. That's, that doesn't that doesn't do it for me, <laughs> yeah. right? As uh-huh. opposed to just that's I don't suppose she could ignore that one, but not easily, not easily. <laughs> yeah. But it, if the the wife can't really talk about the the eye contact in that in yeah. that sentence necessarily because right. it's been completely or ignored. the joke or something. I mean, I had one girlfriend who her husband would tell mild, mm. you know, mild risque jokes, Mm -hmm. you know, and and she would just kind of roll her eyes, which I guess is a rejection, not necessarily ignoring. Yeah. I will say my own husband, this was so funny. It was about a year ago or something, and uh, he came in from wherever he was coming from. It was the end of the day. And he looked over at me at the table and he said, are you tired, honey? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm tired. You know, and later total, on, yeah, later dream. on, I mean, I had no, like in the moment, I didn't get it, right? <laughs> yeah. That he was checking me out. But but later, about a couple hours later, I'm like, when you said, are you tired? Were you like interested in going to bed? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, honey, I just want you to know I had no <laughs> idea. Because the answer honestly would have been yes. Yeah. You know, I'm that that I'm up for. Yeah. I mean, I was tired. I was answering truthfully the yeah. question yeah. that I heard, <laughs> but not the the subtext question right. of like, is it okay if I approach you? Which yeah. is really what he was checking out. Uh, he was testing the waters. He there. was testing the waters. Yeah. And and really the waters were fine. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so so Lori, like, are we? Ha, do we? Can we get better at these? Can we get better at yes. our sexual bids yes. and with our partner? I mean, first of all, I think we have questions, right, for these people to ask their partner yeah. is, is you know, how do you like a sexual bid? Yeah. What's what's your favorite sexual bid I've ever made? Yeah. Well, just exploring that, right? I mean, that's that's the idea of just making sure that you know when your partner is making a sexual bid and when they're not. Yeah. Right. Because if and, you don't know, you, you don't know what to watch for. And I think this is this feels um, particularly true for women that that want to initiate sex that are mm-hmm. that are really comfortable initiating mm-hmm. sex. Because men are not subtle, cre- not don't tend to be subtle, right? <laughs> I mean, like you talked about the 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 difference between the cup and bump and the yeah. and the and the eye contact, right? Right, right. And knowing knowing how our partners are trying to initiate and make those sexual bids is really important because we don't want to miss them. We're not intentionally trying to miss those bids. Right. And I think one of the problems when sex is the issue in the marriage is when when there are multiple rejections or multiple misses. Mm. I mean, then then you know it's problematic. And I just want to say one more thing that Gottman says, if you turn toward your partner, basically you accept, receive the sexual bid or the um, the emotional bid, 86% of the time, that essentially guarantees a happy marriage. Yeah. And if it's only 46% of the time, that means half the time you're not, half the time of what you need to to be happy, which is not 100%. I mean, right? Yeah. We're all going to miss it. Mm. But half of the the average 80, or okay, so I got I to gotta do my math here, guys. Half of the 86%, then that yeah. basically predicts, you know, potentially divorce. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So somebody who is ignoring you or if you're ignoring your partner, you know, through most of their requests for attention sexually or emotionally, I mean, this is very problematic. Yeah, and so the question that emerges out of that for sexual bids is, what? How often am I rejecting those bids, and how often am I turning towards my partner and accepting those bids for yeah, sex? And right? I, I think accepting the bid mm-hmm. is not necessarily saying I will have sex with you this second. Yeah, but that's it's good. enjoying the flirtation, and it's enjoying the the sexuality between you and your partner. It's enjoying chemistry. It's enjoying mm-hmm. touch. Yeah. It's not necessarily agreeing every single time my partner makes a sexual bid. That means I'm walking upstairs and you yeah. know doing it. It's it's returning the eye contact. It's returning the eye contact. Yeah. It's the hubba hubba across yeah. the room. Yeah. It's yeah. winks. It's like in the moment. It's Exactly. Or yeah. it's laughing at the joke or it's you mm. know saying something sexy back but not necessarily saying you know, now's the moment. Yeah. Except that's a good point. I think accepting the bid doesn't mean all of a sudden you're you're just doing it right there. Right. right. I mean, it's not. And that's what people are afraid of, I think, sometimes. If I if I go with this bid, you're going to expect something from me now when I may or may not be ready. Mm-hmm. But I, I think that accepting the sexual bid creates a climate, mm. you know, this environment of sexuality so that when there is time. Yep. And there is energy. There's something to build on. Yeah, you know, between the two of you versus the first time you've been sexual all day. Yeah, and I, and I think that just that also I like the the term of talking about creating a climate because it creates a climate that is comfortable for each person to turn yeah. toward the other. Yeah, exactly. And I think that is so key because then nobody feels awkward when to when you turn toward each other, right? You don't feel like you're doing it for the first time or you're taking that first step or you're the one that's always turning toward and you just want your partner to do that once. All right, you're creating that atmosphere where both of you are doing that. And the amount of accepted bids is going to go up. Exactly. Right? And so exactly. that means the amount that you're having sex is going to go up and the quality of the, of the sex is going to go up. One of your favorite words, Adam, is playfulness. Yeah. You know, I think that if a bid, a sexual bid is accepted, it creates this atmosphere of playfulness mm-hmm. from which, you know, playful, fun sex, exciting sex can grow from. Yeah. But what do we, how do we help people who say, oh, well, that's great advice, Lori and Adam, yeah. but my partner never accepts a sexual bid. Yeah. What can we, how can we help them? I, I think looking at the, just starting the conversation about what is keeping them from, what, from accepting the bid, mm-hmm. you know, and recognizing, are they rejecting the bid? Which means that's the interaction. And then we can start having a conversation about it. Okay, or are so, they ignoring the bid completely? Okay. So I'm going to put you on the spot. I'm going to be okay. the person. And, okay. and what if they say, I just... I really am not in the mood for that. Hmm. You know, what if what if the person says, I'm just not in the mood for it, and they offer me this up, and, I, you know, I've you, got my mind on other things. What would you say to them? Well, I mean, I think the the question would just be back then, well, how can I help that? How can I be supportive? How can I help create a better mood for you? What can I do differently that's going to be more don't so pressure more, me. Don't more supportive of that. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't pressure me. Don't pressure me. <laughs> don't pressure me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that that – that has to begin that negotiation then. Like, mm-hmm. I, I don't want to pressure you. I don't want mm-hmm. to pressure you into doing something that you, you don't want to do. But this is, this is important for our relationship, right? Yeah. And it, starts, it, it at least starts that conversation off. I think the other thing that you, you can do is talk to your partner about how they like to be seduced. Mm-hmm. I mean, that is, I think that's key to know right. like if there's no if, uh, don't pressure me well what feels like pressure to you help me understand I don't want to pressure you how and, help and what me it, understand I mean I, I hear this I know this you know they're saying like well because they're always thinking about it they're always mm. saying jokes they're always being crass I mean first of all I will say there there is a select few but not very many women who respond to the junior high crass mm-hmm. jokes right you know sometimes not to the explicit it's like really being somewhat um, clever mm. here, you know, the, the flirtation that is clever is much more helpful. Mm. And I, I think if the person is constantly turning away and being who I just was, yeah, I mean, the conversation has to be about this is, this is my connection. You know, mm-hmm. I, I connect better through the body, so that's why I'm always making those kinds of bids. And is that person responding to the emotional bids, perhaps the yeah. cross bids that their partner is making? 
Yeah. You know, and because oftentimes by that time, the, it, it looks like the sexual bids are being shut down, but usually the emotional bids from their partner are also being shut down, either in retaliation, mm-hmm. right, or because the climate has gone dead, they're yeah. so frustrated, anger is ruling the day. Yep. Yep. Well, and I think it's important. It is, it's a two-way street as well. So the the partner that is never making the sexual bids, I think, has to begin to ask themselves, why don't I ever make sexual mm-hmm. bids? What is keeping me from making those bids and how can I begin to change that? And I think that that, that creates, if, if the person that's always making the bids is saying, why do they keep getting rejected? And the person that never makes bids is asking, what is keeping me from making those bids? We're taking ownership and responsibility for that for ourselves. And that's going to lead to much more success than if I'm just blaming my, my partner for never making bids or making or always making the wrong bids. Right. I like it. Okay. So turn toward your partner out there, both emotionally and sexually, and you are listening to Foreplay Radio Sex Therapy with your sex therapist, Lori Watson, and Dr. Adam Matthews, our couples therapist. Thanks so much for listening. Hey, help us stay on top here at Foreplay. We'd love it if you would subscribe and share it with your friends, and please take one sec and rate and review us. Thanks so much. 